All right, I'm here to talk to you about Meyer Sound's Cal Column Array loudspeaker. And uh, we're demonstrating uh, here on the booth the Cal 32. Cal comes in three different sizes. We've got a Cal 32, a 64, and a 96. Uh, the numbers refer to how many drivers are in there. So what we're looking at behind me has uh, eight four inch drivers and 24 tweeters. And uh, Column's loudspeakers are obviously prevalent in the industry. Um, it became such an important market that Meyer Sound really wanted to look at it and approach it kind of in the way that we've approached most of the things we do, as far as saying, well, what can we do better? This is a market that's already well established, and if we're going to enter it, uh, what can we provide that we think would fit along with our reputation and hopefully raise the bar of what column speakers can do? So the major areas where we feel we've, uh, we've made improvements in what column speakers can do is in power. The Cal column array loudspeaker is a very powerful loudspeaker. Um, putting the loud in column arrays, if you will. Uh, the 96, the largest version of this speaker, can do 106 dB at 90 meters. So this is a whole upgrade in power. And with Meyer Sound, it's always important to us to keep distortion very low, to keep our linearity very high. So you're looking at individual channels of DSP and amplification for every driver in there. Uh, we also, and this is as much a physical thing as you can do with DSP, is in driver spacing. This is what allows us to keep away gradient lobes, which is energy off axis, which is a large, can be a large problem. Going to a reverberant space, you're making a directional beam of sound, but you've got off axis lobes. That can make the job a little more difficult. With the really tight spacing of the drivers in here and all the control we have, we're able to steer our beam up 30 degrees or down 30 degrees, change the beam from five degrees to 30 in, in width, and keep all of the off axis stuff under control. And so it's really provided, um, that it's putting the speech intelligibility really into it because there's nothing like having an HF spike or some out of control stuff bouncing up off the ceiling when somebody has just spent a lot of money and time specifically to control that. So we're stoked, we're, uh, we're demonstrating it here uh, at the trade show. Um, we're generally not really excited about turning on loudspeakers on trade show booths, but if you make a column speaker, this is exactly where it's designed to do. And so uh, we're, sure we're moving the beam around, we're letting people experience it themselves. Like most things in our industry, fun to talk about, uh, best to experience. It's got ADB input, two of them. So uh, Meyer Sound has been involved with the Avenue Alliance since its beginning. So uh, we're really excited about that. So we're all ADB ready. Um, and the same thing as with Dimitri, mm -hmm. is what you'll find here with Cal. So eight, two mm -hmm. ADB inputs, three analog inputs, ASEBU as well. Uh, all the general connectivity um, for override, uh, preset control, all those sort of things. So for, for health and safety, uh, if there's any override stuff needed, we've really tried to uh, study the install market well and what they need and really give them just about every kind of connection they could need on the bat. Well, certifying for voice alarm, I mean, standards and stuff is all very complicated, you know, depending on which country you're dealing with and how. The most important thing is that we leave a proper range of voltage to trigger shutoffs and that we are able to talk to anybody's device. And so uh, we've used contact closures, relays, to be able to let other people's devices control or shut off streams to Cal. Um, we can also override and switch to other inputs. So that's why there's the multiple inputs on the back is to allow for, for safety inputs. So we've tried to work uh, with everybody's setups and restrictions. It's, it's, uh, it's something to do for sure.